What's going on, man? Oh, you know, same shit. Long time to see, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Matt, what are you drinking on tonight, brother? Guess what? It's the same thing. All right. <laughs> How's that going? You like it? Uh, it's it's okay. I, I don't think I'll splurge. Okay. On the Out of 10? Uh, like a six, maybe. Okay. It, it's good, but it's not... It's not... It's okay. It's, it's not you a know? go-to. It's not your yeah. new go-to. Got no. it. Yeah. I'm drinking the uh, Wild Ride from New Belgium. It's their uh, 30th anniversary. Uh, it's drinkable. It's an amber IPA. It's not as... Uh, uh, hoppy or as riny as you i feel most ipas are this is a little bit uh, more amber ale ish and it's good so matt nice before we begin we have so this will be we need to answer last week's question yeah so i've oh. been wondering all week what is that answer <laughs> <laughs> more like 20 minutes i i <laughs> It was 20 minutes ago and I forgot. Uh, all right. So the, the question was, though that the trivia question was, if your bike is on your side stand, what position should your handlebars be in to help you lift a bike off the side stand? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to take a guess or, or what? I'm going to say full lock left. I mean, the, the, the same <clears throat> point of the kickstand. Uh, when it's when it's full left, there's more weight on the side stand, or more more weight wanting it. That makes fall. sense. If you do full right, it unloads and wants to tip the other way. It's so definitely it's way easier. It's actually lighter to lift the yeah. bike off the side stand. Dude, I sit corrected. So there you have it. Good answer. I like that answer. That I mean, like now that I'm thinking about it, it makes total sense. Yeah, you probably you do. You probably do it and not even. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm I'm thinking of times where I've done that. I'm like, I I think I do that all the time because like even if you were to sit on it and like turn them full right, the bike like almost feels like it lifts a little bit. Yeah. Already, like when we go to put bikes outside, because we have like a, a bunch of different slopes going on where our, where we kind of put our bikes after done working on them, and if we have it full right, opposite of the direction of, of the bikes wanting to lean it won't sit with full weight. So it's a little more sketchier if you're on a, like a weird you yeah. know, topography. Um, so that, that makes total sense. You ever spin bikes on their side stand? All the time. All the time. I try it with every bike that I, <laughs> that I wear. <laughs> you know what it's I'm talking about? Do, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do it on sport bikes. All, like, dude, yeah. we don't have a lot of room because we bring everything in at night. Yeah. So I'm not gonna meh, 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 yeah. meh, 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 the whole time. I'll yeah, just kind of Austin whoop. powers it, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that that's exactly it. When when I was at a dealer, we'd have to push all the bikes in and out, and I yeah. my bay was at the very end, and I was all pushing till the end because you couldn't even get to your goddamn bay. Yeah. So, dude, you just take the bike, turn it to the right, with the handlebars, and then you lift and you just whoop. You spin that sucker around it's on awesome. the side stand. It's it's awesome, dude. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, a cool trick. If, if you guys feel unsafe with doing that, you can't really do it on cruisers. Yeah, way too much weight. It's mainly like a dirt bike, sport bike thing. Right. Um, but what you can also do to make yourself feel safer is kind of like Matt said, full lock right. Grab a hold of the handlebar and find somewhere on the back tail, and you kind of put your weight into the bike and kind of bring it up over and do a little motion like that, and it'll spin. Yeah. Awesome trick. Don't do it on fresh concrete or anything. If you got a nice concrete driveway, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> but, uh, but if it's your, yeah, you know, someone else's store. parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Fire it up, bro. All right. Welcome, guys, to the Broken Moto Show. Episode 28. 28. Yeah. And this show is... Uh, Myself, Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair dot com, and Cody from Motorcycle MD, and we answer your tech questions. And Cody's going to tell you the million rules and the email where you can write in for a tech question to be yes. answered on the show. Best place to reach out to us. The only place that we prefer you to reach out to us is at the email of Ask 
brokenmoto at gmail.com. You guys get your own email address, okay? Send in your questions, your comments, uh, your likes, your dislikes, and we'll try to answer them on here, okay? In the subject, try to, try to put the year-making model um, in the description. Describe it, you know, whatever issues you, that, that you're having. Um, if you're doing, if you're dealing with carburetor stuff, let us know some more details, you know, jet sizes, what kind of stuff the bike has on it, year, make and mile, uh, mile, year, make and miles. I've already said that, but it's important. The miles is helpful as well, as well as some pictures and some videos of what you guys are dealing with. It's really helpful to see. It's fun for us to see um, what you got going on. Um, you'd be surprised at how many answers can come from just a visual picture of what you're dealing with, you know. Um, you, you got a smartphone, use it, send it, send it in, and um, it'd be really helpful for us. Oh, yeah. We, we, you can spot a million little things from Easily. a picture that's not mentioned Easily. usually in an email. Yeah. From what we found. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, before we begin, we need a question for this week. And I got it. I got it. I got it this time. What is so, it, man? The question is probably pretty easy for most, but... What automotive manufacturer owns Ducati? Mm. What auto manufacturer owns Ducati? Okay. I do not know that one. Cool. Cool. I, I actually didn't know either. So um, in the comments below, guys, let us know your answers. Get involved, you know. Dude, quick story about, a, about Ducatis. So. Yeah. I was 18, got my M license, and I got hired as a pre-delivery inspector at a dealer. So that was my job was to ride or inspect, do some little things, mechanical things on new and used bikes that rolled off the showroom floor. So I I logged 40 to 60 miles on all kinds of bikes. Which were these awesome. for bikes that were being sold or just being bought? Uh. I mean, customer. I guess that's the same yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Great oh, question. what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Customers would buy the bikes and I'd have to check them out and then hand them off to them or whatever. Okay. Pre-ride or pre-purchase inspections. Yeah. So Got for, for new and used, um, all the, all the jet bikes. And then there was, uh, we were also Ducati and Aprilia de dealer. Cool. Okay. The day I got hired, someone stole a Ducati out the front window. Wow. They just smashed the front window and stole it. Brand new Ducati or was it used? Uh, brand new. Wow. And then uh, this, is, this is what my boss did to me. <laughs> um, there was a, a Ducati 999 that this guy brought in for service. And, and he's like, my boss is like, hey, that bike is ready for a test drive. I want you to wheel it out there and take it for a ride. I'm like, are you serious? I mean, dude, this was like. A, what a twenty thousand dollar bike! Oh, yeah. Here I am, eighteen. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it for a ride, sure, man. So I'm yeah. walking it out, and the owner's like, no, man, I I can't let you ride my bike. And you know, he this was a setup, obviously. So I'm like, all right. So I put on the kickstand, I walk back in, and my boss is like, no, 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 you go out there, and you tell them <laughs> that you can fucking out ride out out ride them any day of the week. So I go out, go out there and I said that and the guy's just laughing his ass off and, you know, they're just messing with me. But it was that's awesome. Funny, that's awesome, man. Not like your boss. Yeah. You want to dive in? Yes. Cool. Um, I'll take what uh, I took the first question last time. Do you want to take it or? Yep. Let me do it. Yeah, sure. All right. Do it. All right. Question one. This is uh, the smoking KZ650. Yeah. Okay. We all remember this. It's been on the past couple episodes. So here it is. Hi, guys. I hope my pictures come through. So, yeah, we have some pictures. I'll pull them up, share my screen, and we'll talk about them. After I saw my questions about my uh, KZ650 smoking on your show, I went ahead and broke down the top end. The attached pictures show pistons three and four are wet as are the corresponding valves. All cylinders look pretty sooty to me, but they really good for 24K. The cylinders are all within spec, no ridge. Pistons look like new and two thou fitment. So I guess the piston to wall clearance is two thou. Rings look 
so good. I'm almost tempted to put them back in. Anyway, looks. Uh, anyway, seems like maybe the smoke could have been valve seals. Haven't torn the head down yet. So fingers crossed. I'm looking for carb advice from the experts. To review, my bike has a Kirker header and pods. Main jets are 115. I believe the idle jets are stock uh, as the mixture screw is at two turns out. I set the needles at one clip position richer. I get that the pods and the smoke I experience is gray, not black, but things still look rich. Bill from Hastings, Michigan. P.S. Forgot to tell you that the picture of the tap, it was the only one that didn't look perfect. Weird, right? Cam Loeb looks fine, though. Man, I feel like I'm reading really slow. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, I think you're reading right on time, man. All right. So he took this thing all apart. You want me to pull up these pictures here? Yeah, do it. Do it. This is kind of cool. All right. Can you see my screen? We're only 40 minutes in. <laughs> No. Can can you see my screen now? I can. Yep. All right. So here's here are the pistons. The two on the right are a little wet. One and two are dry. Um any evidence of oil burning here? I, I can't tell. It looks totally normal to me. Yeah. I mean, these are I mean, who knows what this could have been? Fuel or oil? I don't know. Dude, motors look like that. After 4,000 miles in some cases, I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't we, uh, okay. we've done crankshaft rebuilds on like CB 300s that were that, that there, that there was like a recall and this is normal. This is what happens inside the, inside of a explosion. And he likes Coors Light. Nice. He does. Cold as the Rockies. Okay. So here's the head and stuff, stuff being wet doesn't matter to me at all either. I'm not too concerned about things being wet. I'll because who, who knows how it's shut down right. before, you know, I mean, who knows? So that's all normal stuff too. It's just carbon, man. Yeah. Um, and then here it looks like he cl- scraped the piston a little bit. Yeah. That tap it right there is questionable. Oh, that, is a tap it or a piston? What is this? That's, thing? that's a tap it. So oh, this has, right. I believe it has shim under bucket. Okay. So, or it's shim over, but usually there's like a lip on it if it's shim over. So I think it's shim under. Okay. Um, th- there's some crud on there, which means that there's probably the same type of crud inside of the valves, the on the valve stems as well. I think he's on the right track with, um, he needs to break down that head. I mean, you could look for as far as oil seeping past the seal um, with like a quite a bit of buildup on the back of the valve. See, because it's kind of burning onto the back of it. Mm-hmm. Um, even then, he needs to clean the valves up completely, clean the seats up completely of the valves, and then just do a simple test with like pouring gas into the intake track or the exhaust track. Once it's all clean, I would even maybe go as far as lapping them if there is some crud on the seat. I think he's got, I, I, I mean, given the age of the bike, it's very possible to have, you know, dried up valve stem seals yeah well i mean okay so if he's burning oil he should be concerned about the seal yeah and oil weeping down the guide yeah and whatnot so um i don't know i don't know how you can test for that at this point well i'm gonna make a statement that um I've seen over and over and over again. When you have an old bike and you fire this bike up for the first time after its long hibernation, the bike is going to smoke for a while. The bike, I mean, there's stuff in the exhaust. There's stuff that has trying to get out of the cylinder. I've fired up bikes from mid 2000s that sat for six years and I fired up and it smokes the entire shop out until (laughs) it doesn't until it stops yeah it's just burning moisture it's burning all this crap that's been inside the cylinder in some cases it's like stuck valves in some cases i mean in most cases when you have a valve uh, oil leaking past the valve stem seal you're going to get a lot of smoking up front right when the bike fires up 
I did notice that he said that the smoke is gray and not blue. Okay. Um, maybe it's oil. Maybe it's a mix of the two. I'm not sure how long he ran the bike. You know, once he fired it up, did he take it around the block and get it nice and hot and get it warmed up to operating temperature and then see if it, if it dissipated? Did it stop? I don't know because he's emailed in three times, but I, I, I don't knock him for taking his head apart. But I think he just needs to do what I said. There's no way to check to see if oil is leaking down the stem seals by bench testing. There's no real way to do that. Yeah, that wouldn't be a valid test. Yeah, and you can check inner diameter of the, of the um, guide. And you can check outer diameter of the steel of the stem and see if it's within spec because they should give specs right. for that. But um, you're dealing with heavy wear when it comes to that. Um, yeah. But the stem seals can still be bad. You have it apart. You need to replace the, the stem seals for sure. Clean up the valve seat. Clean up the valve face. Lap them. And then um, the gas check, gas test is, is a really quick way to see if anything's going to leak pipe past there. Right. Um. I have some videos on that because I went through that with the Cheval engine. Cool. Uh, the, I, I had a lot of leakage past the valves in a leak down test. So I did all that. I think I put some solvent in there and I, I, I did some measurement with a dial indicator. Yeah. Um, all that. Yeah. You can do all that stuff. Um, Gas is super thin and it will leak if there's a, if it's not seated all the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but his question was about carb stuff. He needs, it sounds like he needs to bump everything up. What do you yeah. Think? Yeah. So, um, he says idle jets are stock. Uh, what does he have on here? Pods. Hold on here. Okay. So headers, he has a exhaust and pods. Yeah. Um, oh, man, what, what, but you 77. Yeah. And I'm not sure if 115 is stock for me on this. Yeah. Okay, since it's a 70s bike, it wasn't pro it probably wasn't lean from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I've had some like CB 550s, they actually want a leaner pilot jet. Um, but hmm. this is a okay. fuel screw. It, it's probably gonna want one size larger, at least on the fuel screw. Right. Or wait, he says air mixture screw. Okay. I don't know, but the answer will be in the air screw setting. If you tune this guy and you're at one and a half out, you're good. Uh, yeah. Wait, he's saying two turns out. I'm all over the place here. Sorry. No, you're fine, man. <laughs> okay, so he's two turns out. Um, so he's trying to lean it out. We also don't know how it ran. That's true. So we're trying to diagnose just a simple carb tune. For, yeah. what he, for what he's got, not knowing, you know, how it's responding currently. We're, we're trying to jump 10 steps ahead here. Exactly. Um, well, you know what? To, to be safe on the pilot jet, probably just run stock mm -hmm. and see where your air screw setting's at because it's, again, it's a 70s bike. Needle, uh, yes, drop it down one clip to make it richer. And then with the mains, you and I always say... 15 to 20 larger is it 15 to 20 yeah mm -hmm. okay over so if it's 115 go to uh i would start at 125 and work your way up okay yeah sounds yeah good. you're gonna be messing with it there's no surefire jet size to that but you'll figure out what you're gonna land on um if you're dealing with mid-range stumble or or no go after full throttle then you gotta keep going up yeah, but the bigger question is the engine. I mean, okay, the pistons look good. Clean yeah. them up. Clean them up. Uh, I I've soda blasted pistons and it come they come out beautiful. Or dip yeah. them dip them in chem dip. It'll burn all that carbon right off. Um, make sure all the ring grooves are really clean. Yeah. Uh, rings. Uh, man, rings are cheap. If they're available, you could probably get a set of rings for like eighty to hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, pop those in, make sure the ring end gap is good. Replace your valve, val valve stem seals. Yeah. Clean everything up. Make sure you have good sealing. And check it. Yeah. Slap it all back together and then worry about the jetting later. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, and if you are interested in running the stock rings, you can do so. Just check the ring end gap. There's going to yeah. be a spec for ring end gap. Check it. 
and uh, see if they're still within spec. How close are they to being at the service limit? And yeah. Roll with it. But once you get it all back together and it's all cleaned up and sealing and it's good, um, run it. You know, run it. Get yeah. it nice and warmed up and run it and put it through its paces and see if that smoke goes away. And then uh, worry about it after that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. So we got a beer fund. We have a way for you guys to donate to uh, the Broken Moto Show. Um, and many people do. And it's it's really awesome just to sh see your guys' see your guys's support um by just you know we have a, a link in the description for you, to, for you to hit you can donate three dollars or more and uh we have some uh some pretty repetitive givers why don't you let us know who they are matt yeah so we got justo mm -hmm. the fits and we got justo again Justo is our regular here yeah man that's why i was able to afford this delirium that's right. <laughs> so right. Thanks for that. And we got Paul in the UK who bought us a tray. So thank you guys so thanks much. Thanks, guys. And cheers. Thanks a lot. Bink. We appreciate your guys' uh, donations. It, it, it keeps the engine going, you know. That's right. So thank you. Next couple of questions we got are may not be considered full questions, but you guys send us an email and we're going to read it out. Unless it's three pages. <laughs> so questions are response to, I think th this one's uh, Greg. He gave us a, a picture of his Suzuki GSF bandit. Um, kind of a cool shot of his garage and uh, how he's storing his ponies. Let me pull um, that up. Yeah, pull it up. There it is. Bam. He's got a lot of nice toys, man. Yeah, man. He has some good insulation in there too. Yeah. And so, he's he's got some kind of nice car because he's he's got tire storage over there. Oh. Or maybe it's just winter tires. I don't know. But man. Oh wait. I see it right here. The white. So what are we got in here? He's got some kind of car right here. Is that yeah, I see it. That black one. Is that a that is that a Kawasaki? That side cover does not look Honda to me. Is that GS? Is it, it must be. It Suzuki. looks like a GS. It looks like he's a Suzuki dude. I think you're right. Except for the Yamahas right. that are in the back there. Very cool. Yeah. Cool, Greg. Thanks for sending us. Awesome, picture, man. man. Nice garage, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and and he just wrote in the answer to uh, last week's question or the week before. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Was, the week before last, um, which was which was which one was that again, Matt? Uh, the Suzuki Advance. What, what you mean? What number? The question. Oh, what does SACS stand for? Okay, and he and he wrote it in that's called Suzuki Advance Cooling System, oil cooling. So yeah, you were... at, <laughs> at, and that Bandit that he has is the oil air cooled. Uh -huh. Stuff. So they still make that. Uh, or I mean, well, his is an 03. I don't even know. I don't not even keep up to that stuff, but yeah, right. They've had that for a long run for yep. sure. Honda uses it too. It's called H A C V. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> C S Honda advanced cooling system. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, Greg. So, uh, question three. Yep. Uh, Hey guys, hope both you and your families are safe and well. They are. Is your family doing well, Matt? They are. Cool. Safe They're and well? Good. Yep, that's right. Cool. Mine too. I need the benefit of your knowledge and expertise once again for what should be something very simple, but is proving to be very difficult. Simply put, I can't remove the cylinder head on my CB750K8. You want to pull those pictures up while I'm doing this? Uh, I swear to God, it must be welded on. <laughs> my guess, it's not been removed since the bike was made. The first problem I had was removing the four by 12 millimeter nuts on the rear inlet side of the head. I've attached photos purely for your information. Sorry, there's so many and out of sequence. As you can see, they are recessed. Uh oh, I lost it. I got it. As you can see, they are recessed. Where was I? 
in the webbing of the casting that supports the rocker arms. How, uh, how they were torqued up in the first place is a mystery. There is no way to get a normal spanner on, as you can see. I'm sorry. Normal spanner <laughs> on, as you can get a ring spanner on the nut, and you can't turn an open-ended spanner. I had to modify a ring spanner so I could, so it would clear the casting and fit over the nut. The mod worked, but I don't know how I'm going to torque them. Just have to estimate, I suppose. Thought this might be of interest to others who come across the same problem. Now, for your advice, I have tried everything I know to remove the head without success. Use wooden drift, stake, and lump hammer, heavy-duty mallet on the parts of the head that would take us a significant blow. I've destroyed several wooden drifts used copious quantities of releasing fluid and left for days to penetrate. Unfortunately, you can see I slipped off the hex on the in inlet port tube, bent it, then sheared it off. That sucks. Any ideas how? Any ideas where I can get one from? eBay. That's a quick answer to that. No luck on e. Oh, wait. No luck on eBay. <laughs> well, never mind. I retract that answer. David Silver Spares, UK and CMSNL, Netherlands. That's very surprising. Um, so to quick answer that, I would also say go to, uh, if you're on Facebook at all, go to the groups. You know, there's a lot of cool guys in different forums on the group pages for um, 750 stuff. And I'm sure someone's got something. You might be able to get a used head for 50 bucks, you know, or 100 bucks, whatever. Um, and someone's probably got something somewhere. So I wouldn't check Facebook groups. There's a lot of, like I said, a lot of um, friendly people on there that, that might be able to help you out or at least point you in the right direction. Someone probably on there knows exactly who's making them still. You know, there's all kinds of cool information. In fact, it's now lifting the cylinder as well as the head. The only thing I can think of to try is to remove the head and cylinder together. And once removed, try using a substantial wooden drift and up the bore of the cylinder however this doesn't really appeal to me as i'd prefer to remove the head first than the cylinder and barrels any suggestions uh more beer for advan for advice will be forthcoming cheers guys so this is a single overhead yes okay um I can't remember. I've I've done a motor on one of these, I, and I I can't remember if that nut was an issue for me. No, so, maybe it well, was. And I well, hey, let me cut you short. I had a conversation it, with Do Paul. It. Okay, <laughs> uh, those cam towers need to come off, and there's nuts underneath okay. there. That's what I thought. And then when I told him that, he was like, "Light bulb." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, Paul, you bought my video. You should watch it. <laughs> oh man. So, oh. He's got my video. He just he just had a brain fart. Yeah. So he was understandable. Just going, going through this. And yeah, those cam towers gotta come off because there's the rubber pucks. And yep. Okay. And then there's more nuts under yeah. there. Yeah. And then you get you you gain complete access to all those. That makes yeah, because I saw the pitch and I'm like, there's a there's I see like an eight millimeter butt bolt on top of that cam tower. I was like, yeah, I feel like I remember taking those off. Like he's yeah, totally understandable, man. It happens. Brain fart. Yeah. Um, and there are those rubber, those little rubber pucks underneath there and there's more bolts. So has he separated it since he's done this? Uh, probably. Okay. I, cause I, once I, that I happens, know. I mean, yeah, it should split. Yeah. Um, it split. And Hey, Paul, since you're dealing with cycle exchange for your trans, ask them if they have that inlet thing. Yeah. They probably have a box full of them. I bet. Um, so that would be one good source. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or Solid. another one is the SO HC forums, single overhead mm -hmm. cam forums. Yeah. That's that's a good spot. Uh, to get used parts and whatnot, so yeah, man. So, someone will help you out. The internet is uh, plentiful and yeah, waiting for your response, dude. You know how many bikes I got rid of in the in the mid nineties because the internet wasn't established. I came across so much shit. Hmm. 
and yeah. and like like for example i came across like a honda s90 mm -hmm. garbage picked it right yeah. the carburetor was toast it had pinholes in the float dude honda wanted 200 dollars, right well if ebay was around i probably could score a carb for 20 oh yeah man or these chinese carburetors i could put a chinese carb yeah, yeah for sure no but i mean you, you know like i had to get rid of it because i'm like i'm no way am i dumping two three hundred dollars in this right. thing you know brand the new. struggle was real in the 90s man yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you couldn't even you actually had to go somewhere and talk to someone right. you know oh, not, none of this that. keyboard jamming dude right man i was born in the 90s what 1990 you, Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think my sister was born in 92. Okay. I was born in 81. All right. So a lot, a lot changed in that 10 year period, man. No, oh, for sure. A lot, dude. So for sure. Yeah. Cool. So question four, take it, man. All right. Sorry. I was filling up my beer here. Flip to it. All right. Where is it? Where the hell is it? I'm lost, man. Oh, here it is. Question four. Dear Broken Moto Gurus, you both have helped me countless times and I can't thank you enough. I removed the valve guides, uh, eight of them, on my 80 Suzuki GS850 and bought a valve guide reamer for install. I have the new guides and the reamer to fit, but now I'm not sure what to do. Can you ream the valve guide holes without proper machining tools? If so, is it similar to tapping a thread? If not, do I need to bring the cylinder head to a machine shop? I'm guessing you're going to tell me for even asking if I could do it myself, but I'm a budget builder and I would be remiss if I didn't ask. Any experience you two have with vi valve guide installation would be greatly appreciated and I would love to hear it about on the show. Thank you, Ethan. Thanks, Ethan. All right, so the issue the issue here is if you're gonna do this job and you're gonna you're gonna put in the valve guides and then ream them, then you will you will need to cut the seats based off the reamed hole as your pilot. That is now your axis for the valve, and the seat has to match. So remember when we talked about those new way cutters? Yes. So basically, after you put the guide in, it has to be reamed to, for the correct clearance for the valve. Stem. Correct. And now you have to cut the seat based off of that new axis that that valve is going to ride on. Okay. Um. So if you do not have the cutters, then I don't see how you can do this job yourself because now your, your, your valve is going to be closing on a seat that is not concentric or off or whatever to, to your, to your, to your new guide, new, new, new guide. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I've never, I've watched a machinist remove and install guides and ream them and do a valve job, but I've never seen it done manually. I know you, you talked about it. Maybe you can mm -hmm. add to this. Um, but I, I just don't see how you can rem ream a straight hole with a drill, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So, Yeah. So what I would do, um, Ethan, the way to install your guides is going to be pretty straightforward because it's going to, it's, you're going to heat the head up to a high temperature. I'm not sure the exact degree, but hot. 200, 300. Yeah. Something like that. And then you're going to, uh, tap in that guide with a with a a guide installation tool or an air hammer <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm serious with what 
you never seen i've seen a guy freaking wow okay what bit did he use on it he had some kind of uh a stepped bit which okay. it, would, it would go in it would go in like this right yeah and then it would just sit on it and you just yeah i mean i'm not saying crazy just right 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 right, right. Yeah. right yeah the the tool that and you install them with is going to be something that goes inside of the inside diameter of the guide to keep it sh straight obviously and then something that's going to go around the um the the, the not, not the flange but i guess the seat of it and so with the hot head and cold um, guides, it's, it's going to go in pretty easy. It's not going to be very, very difficult, but you're going to tap them in until they're seated. You'll be tapping them in with the guide tool. Tap, 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 tap until you hear a noise change. And that means that they're seated. The reamer is going to be used to ream the new guide inner diameter. It puts like a new surface on the inside of the guide. Now, in... A perfect world, what you're going to want to do is exactly what Matt said, is um, make sure that the seat of the valve is now matching the pitch and, di and angle. It's not going to change a crazy amount, but it could change enough to matter um, because some material is lost when coming out and some material is, is gained when going in. So but what you can do is, is install all of your guides, put your valves in, and then check that. Like we said with the, with an earlier question, check, you can, there's uh what's that paste? It's like blue. Daikin blue. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like per a paint. Persian blue. Yeah. Persian blue. There you go. And you put it on the seat and then you take that, you put your valve in and then you would just simply spin the valve in the seat. And then there's going to be a contact bat patch that gets worn away from it contacting the seat. And then you can say, okay, this is what needs to happen. Uh, the seat needs to be cut this much or this much. And that's what a head, uh, a head shop will do, um, a machine shop. But you can look and see if, if, it's, if you're even in the parameters. You may be on some of them. You may be off on some of them, whether it's not even on the valve seat um, or it's too high, too low, you know, all that stuff. But you can do that yourself for sure. And then I feel like you can use that information to then determine, okay, this is now above my head. I'm going to take it to a machine shop and have them do a nice little valve job, recut the seats and make it all match. Um, I think it'd be very rare for, I mean, you have eight guides, it'd be very rare for all eight to be perfect. Um, I don't see that happening, but you never know. And it'll be a learning experience for you to see, okay, what should it look like in your book? They'll give you a, some kind of, image or picture of what the seat you know of what the how big the contact patch should be on the valve seat um and if it's wrong if it's like this it's right if it's like this and how high and low it's you're coming down to half a millimeter you know what i mean um but i think all that information that you can gain on your on your own after installing the the guides and doing those checks on all the valves um would be beneficial maybe they all are fine because that's the check that you do to make sure that they're not fine. You know what I mean? So if, if they're good and it passes, then run it and do a gas leak check. Do those, do those checks. I have never in my career replaced valve guides and then had the head cut to do um, the seats. I've never had to do that. In my field, what you do is you replace the head. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless it's like an old bike, even then, I mean, it's, it's, I've never had to do that yet. I've never rebuilt old motors to the point where now I'm doing this guy job, doing this seat job, getting him recut. I've like, people don't have enough money to have me do that. You know what I mean? So on newer stuff, dirt bikes, four wheelers, you, you, all you're doing is just replacing the head and that's what it comes with, but that's not his case. So. So, but I mean, like, okay, so he has the guides and he has the reamer. So mm -hmm. putting, taking the guides in and out is easy. Yeah. Right. But how, how do you go about reaming the guide? So you would measure first. But I'm saying like you would do it with a regular drill and you just 
have at it? No, it, it, it should be like a hand tool. Okay, so the, there's a pilot on it, I'm sure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you just kind of walk it through. Yeah, like you walk it through. Um, I, I understand. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it's this not tool like a, It's not like a bolt extractor looking thing. It's just like flutes on a straight rod. It's just okay. like chambers and flutes. So you're taking it and like you're just spinning it in. And like cutting this new surface, yeah, almost like honing in a way, removing any burrs or any bad things in the guide, and then you're gonna measure that. Okay. All right. No, no. I I mean I know what a reamer looks like, but I was. Okay. I, I've never I've never bought this stuff. So here yeah. here's another thing. By the time you buy all the tools to do this, you could just pay them a shop to do it. If this is like a one time off thing for you. Mm -hmm. Or if you do, because I mean, I paid like 300 bucks to have my CB750 head fully done. Yeah. And they skim the surface, the gasket surface and awesome. pressure. You know, I mean, that's not, that's not a terrible amount of money. No, it's not. And it's, it's like it. a, it's like yeah. a week turnaround too. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. Send it in. Yeah. I'll do it in a week. You know? And you can sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, okay. So the, the reamer, but then you have to take care of the seats and it doesn't sound like you have the the tools not yet you didn't buy the tools to cut the seats so you got to factor in the price for that too right and that right. stuff isn't cheap unfortunately no it's not um if you're going to be doing this often sure but you have all the parts i mean i know you that you're trying to save some money but like i said you you can do part of it you know, and then yeah. learn some stuff. Um, but unfortunately, that new learning is not going to be factored into the price of the head shop. They're just going to say, yeah, we'll just charge you this much. And I'm like, hey, I've already done, I've already tested all the valves. It only needs it done on six, four, and one. Then, like, they're not going to care. They're just going to do all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to double check all your and work. Plus, it, it'd be worth it to have them make sure that everything else is good. So, yeah. That's it. It's a wrap. Question four. Done. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, listening to us ramble. Hopefully that you guys find it valuable. Make sure you email us. We need your guys' questions. Um, Matt, anything to plug real quick? Speaking of that inbox, I believe we're empty right now. Okay. So we need, we need, we need more emails. Yeah. More questions. Uh. <sighs> Nothing to plug, man. This is coming out in two weeks. How's that gun doing? Where is it? Where'd it go? It's over there. Uh, it's probably shipping by now. So, because this will cool. be out. This will be Fantastic. out mid. This will be out mid February, right? Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's. Yeah. I I have I hope to have them all shipped by then. Cool, man. And by now I'm sold out. So. Um, I will wait for some feedback, you know, why Let's not? See how it does. And, yeah. and then uh, I'll order more for sure. Yeah. And you nope. have a new course out too right now. Yeah. So it's uh, how to start a home business course. Very cool. You can start a service or online business. It's four and a half hours long, 49 video chapters. And it walks you through what I've learned in nine years. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. How to make some passive income, maybe, or um, if you're really good at something and it's valuable to others, they'll pay you for it, you know? Yeah. Very cool. I have um, just one thing, which is just Grip Clean. Make sure you guys check out Grip Clean if you can. Um, get 10% off of your entire order. Um, I love their lemon scent. Um, Ultra, I've changed the whole shop over to using just this stuff. It's a more organic way to uh, keep your hands from cracking and peeling, especially right now. Um, I love their wipes as well. Check out their wipes. Just pick up a tub. You will love them, um, especially if you're in a garage all night and you don't want to go inside with dirty hands. You can clean them before you go in, which is what I use them for. And I love it. My wife loves it. I get yelled at less because of it. So, um, again, use MotoMD at checkout 
and get 10% off your entire order. It throws me some bones and it supports a really awesome company, Grip Clean. Do they have any lotion? Like for cracked hands? Yeah, for your hands. I don't think so. They have dog shampoo. <laughs> no, uh, you, you know what I've been doing at night is before I go to bed, I just put in that, uh, put on some O'Keefe's. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, the green tub stuff? Yeah, I just... Because mm-hmm. I hate putting on lotion like during the day. Oh, yeah. And having, Especially O'Keefe's. Yeah, that stuff's greasy as shit. It's man. super <laughs> greasy, man. It's like, Anyway, uh, cause yeah, my hands get super dry, dude. Yeah. Are you out so. of the tube that I sent you a while back? Uh, grip clean? No. Okay. I well, use very little and well, dude, after you vapor blast everything, it's not dirty. It's true. <laughs> very true. No, it's uh... lucky you. Hey man, I can do it. I know. I know. I can do it too. No, but Check it out, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, if you guys want to get uh, on the show, send us an email. Matt, what is that email? Askbrokenmoto at gmail.com and include pictures and videos. We haven't had any videos in a long time. I know, but we got so, a lot of pictures, which I'm happy yep. about. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. We can share them here. But yeah, videos are cool too. So yeah. Or if you guys have any content that you want us to talk about, send us an email, you know? I don't mind doing a, a some type of conversation about a topic that someone wants to know about more, you know? Yeah. It could cool. be garage related or yeah. whatever, man. Awesome. Well, until next time. Later. Later. <laughs>